Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to my channel. I have not filmed a video in a while. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to crumb coat a cake. I may well have already created a video on this, however if I did probably it was many years ago so you're getting a new and updated version. This is going to be a tutorial, however I'm going to talk you through the entire process of what I do, so if you don't like this style of video then stop watching. There's no quick answer when it comes to cake making, decorating, it just takes a lot of practice and patience, huge amounts of patience actually. <laughs> I have already prepared my cake, it's currently chilling in my fridge. And that's the first thing I will mention, temperature, that is. Temperature is really important. I had so many difficulties coating cakes, getting the sides smooth, simply because the room that I was working in was far too cold. I am in the UK and in the winter this kitchen gets very, very cold and if your cake is too cold, the room that you're working in is cold, your buttercream is cold, it becomes very, very difficult and it can start to tear. So you want to make sure that everything is at room temperature except for your cake which is slightly chilled down. I have found the ideal temperature or temperature range for cake decorating is somewhere between 18 and 24 degrees centigrade. For me probably 22. I like it slightly warm so that would be my recommendation. Okay I'll get the cake and we can start the process. And here we have our cake. <laughs> this is a big cake. It's probably twice the size of my head. So it's slightly chilled but as I already mentioned not too cold. I have already prepared in advance my butter icing. So I've got some in here. This is butter icing rather than buttercream. I think in the US you would call it American frosting. In the UK we call it butter icing. You can also use buttercream, like a French buttercream, Swiss meringue buttercream, whatever is your preference. Just make sure that it is a nice soft consistency. You can always warm it slightly, very very slightly, it will melt easily so be careful if you're doing that, like in a microwave for example. You can thin it down with some milk or cream, even water, that's fine. So that's all ready to go. Then I have my spatula. This is a small spatula which is totally ridiculous for a big cake. You may want to use a slightly larger one than the one I'm using. I've just used this spatula for pretty much every single cake that I've made and it's just what I'm used to using. I like using it. I've tried a bigger one. I found it a bit awkward. Maybe I'll have another go with a big one one day but this is what I like to use. Find the one that works for you. I also like using the angled style of one rather than a completely straight one. You can also use one that's completely straight, that's fine. So that's that. Then you need a cake scraper. I am using this big metal one. This is my preference. You can also get plastic ones. You can get like a perspex, I think it's perspex, where it's like a thicker plastic. I have never used that so I can't really comment on it. Personally, 
I like using this one because it's nice and thin, it gives them a really kind of sharp, smooth edge and you can also warm it slightly in hot water. Obviously if you're using hot water, take precautions, but that's a real bonus because if you're struggling to coat your cake, you can warm it slightly, which partially melts the buttercream and it gives you a really smooth finish. So that's what I'm using, but Again, find the cake cake scraper. I'm not sure what the technical term is, but find the one that works for you. This is just the way that I do it. Always with cake decorating, find your own style because there's no set way of doing things and that's always the best way, your way. So I'm gonna start on the top, just Putting this on, it just needs to be a thin layer because we're sealing in the crumbs here, okay? As you can see, I also have my cake on a turntable. You definitely need a turntable. Well, I would say so. Because it makes things so much easier. Now that I've just done some on top, I will start going around the sides. Again, it does not need to be neat really. You're just sealing it all in and covering up all the gaps. Now that I have a fairly even layer of my butter icing, this is where we are in with the cake scraper. And I'm angling it slightly, probably a 45 degree angle, if I want to be precise. And I'm pushing it into the cake, making sure that it's straight. I'm doing it quite slowly so you can see. I'm also turning the cake turntable with my other hand. So I've been over it just over once. I would say that's okay if there are any gaps. You can just fill those in. However, this is only the first coat just to seal it, so it doesn't really matter if it's not completely smooth. Please don't worry. And now but that's done, I'm just going to get rid of this top edge. So there is our cake, crumb coated. That's basically it. That's all you need to do. Once you have completed this first stage, the cake needs to go back in the fridge. This sets the crumb coat and stops the crumbs from getting into the final coat of your buttercream. That's the whole idea on which is why we call it a crumb coat. The length of time it needs to go in the fridge varies really, it depends on the temperature of everything as I've already mentioned but 
It just needs to be firm really and you can tell by just gently touching your cake and then you'll know and you are ready to fully coat your cake if that's what you plan to do and decorate. And that brings us to the end of this video. I feel I've probably covered everything however if you have any questions please do pop them in the comments below i do read all my comments and i reply to pretty much all of them if i don't know the answer to something i will just be honest <laughs> and say so however i am happy to help you however i can thank you so much for watching and i guess i'll see you soon bye